This caterpillar uh, is a soft bodied uh, kind of uh, construction. It needs to uh, turn into something quite different, which is this hard bodied machine that flies around and it drinks nectar and it has all sorts of different behaviors. It lives in a three dimensional world. In order to get from here to here, this creature basically deconstructs its brain. This brain is taken apart. Most of the cells are killed off. The connections are broken. It, it uh, creates a new brain that's suitable for driving this kind of body. Uh, something very, very critical here is that it's been found that, um, you can read about it here, this is all the work of Doug Blackiston, that uh, caterpillars that are trained to associate um, uh, feeding with a, with a specific stimulus, that memory persists. So, so the butterfly can still remember and can be can be tested behaviorally to, to show that they can still remember. So, so, so here are a few a few remarkable things. First, uh, that memory survives basically the deconstruction of the brain. We don't have any computer architectures that work like that. So, how how does the memory even survive? So that's that's the first thing. Is I, I don't think we understand very much about um, how memory is stored at all. The second interesting thing is that the memory is uh, generalized and transformed because. Uh, butterflies and caterpillars don't eat the same things. So butterflies drink nectar, caterpillars eat uh, leaves. So you cannot simply learn that that stimulus associates with the presence of leaves because that will not serve the butterfly at all. That memory has to be uh, converted and generalized into the idea of food, not leaves, but the generic concept of food so that the butterfly can now do, uh, can make use of that memory and um, acquire acquire food that's completely different from anything that the caterpillar ever saw. And uh, what, what what's happening here is that these memories are being remapped onto a new architecture, not just in the sense of driving a different body, but in the sense of having actually novel generalized meanings. And then finally, you know, you can ask yourself this, this philosophical question, you know, with um, T uh, Thomas Nagel asked, uh, what's, what's it like to be a bat? Well, the second order question is, what's it like to be a caterpillar slowly changing into a butterfly? Not on an evolutionary timescale, but on the timescale of a single organism. What is this, uh, what is this um, transformation like? What's, what's, what's the experience like?